Got three super simple, very clever, and useful group exercises that I think you'll really love. Uh, Pomodoro simulation technique, task toss, and a life-size calendar creation. And uh, this all started when I uh, came into my office on Monday morning today, uh, approximately an hour ago, and I received this lovely email from Natalie. And uh, the email reads, hey, happy May. Hope you and your family are well. Writing as I've been retained to lead a workshop on task prioritization, time management for a team here in Ann Arbor. And I'm trying to brainstorm my ideas for a good breakout session or something uh, kinetic, so movement-based that I'm not, so I'm not just droning on for two hours about time blocking. I don't know if you have any materials related to this, but please feel free to share if you do so. Side note, I've used WeConnect cards on this team before, and the manager liked them so much, she bought a set of her own. Thank you for the commercial. Um, so to redeem myself for checking my email, for doing what everybody does but nobody should do, which is checking your email first thing in the morning, to redeem myself for checking my email first thing Monday morning, I figured I would feed two birds with one worm and record a video response to Natalie that might also be useful to other people. And... Um, at the end of this video, I'll share my process for how I came up with these three activities and exercises so you can come up with your own exercises even if your content doesn't relate to time management, task prioritization, etc. cetera. Um, so the first one, Pomodoro Technique Simulation, love this concept, right? Pomodoro uh, Technique is you take uh, 25 minutes to 25 minutes of focus work, five minutes of break. And so I would suggest if you've got a two-hour workshop, just set a timer, if the workshop starts at 9 a.m., set a timer to go off or an alarm to go off and interrupt you at 9.25 and just say, oh, it's been 25 minutes that we've been together. Uh, Pomodoro Technique says the brain likes when we take five minutes break every 25 minutes. And so everybody get up, walk two and a half minutes in some direction, and then come back. Because throughout today, throughout the workshop, we're actually just going to simulate and test out and play with whether the Pomodoro Technique works or not. I don't know if it will. It's an experiment. Ready, set, go. All right, so super, super simple. Teaches a concept. They will never forget that concept. And it's possible that at the end of the workshop, people will realize, holy smokes, I actually was way more interested, engaged. It kind of reset my brain a little bit so I could focus. Uh, and they may even embed that practice more into their own uh, work and life afterward. So um, activity with a dual purpose. Useful to people outside of the session and very useful to you um, in the session. As a facilitator, uh, you could also take a break or you could use that five minutes to get your head screwed on straight and prep what's next. Okay, second one, life-size calendar creation. Um, this one, admittedly, I did not come up with on my own. I used artificial intelligence and I'll show you the process for doing that because I think it's a really clever way to come up with creative, unconventional um, group exercises. This one, um, just take 30 appointments, sample appointments. And you could take them from your own calendar. You could uh, kind of guesstimate what your group or team have on their calendar and print them off one item per eight and a half by 11. So I'd open up a blank Google Doc and write lunch, 45 minutes. And then I'd write a uh, sales call. And then I'd write reconnection with blah, blah, blah. Um, and I just fill out 30 appointments, print them all out, and I'd have a big, giant, jumbled, shuffled uh, mound of these papers. Maybe I'd even crinkle them and make them a bit of a mess and give the group or small groups the simple task of designing their ideal week, discussing their thinking and debating their thinking as they organize it. And so they need to decide, like, lunch might be a fairly obvious place. But people need to decide uh, if you have a three-hour block for focused work, no interruptions, is that better on a Monday morning for you or is that better in the afternoon? And just to have discussions about it. The end goal, though, and if you want to gamify this a little bit because all a game really is is an objective, create a life-size calendar with some rules. So it's an objective with some rules. So thinking of a game like soccer is score a goal. Okay, that's not very fun. So score a goal, but it has to be within this little net and you can only have this many players and you have this much time and you can't punch each other or you can't get caught punching each other, right? Um, and so if you want to add a layer or a rule or a guideline to this, you might uh, make it a little bit more competitive. Just say first person to design their ideal calendar, especially you might especially want to do that if you want the activity to be like a quick 10 to 15 minutes uh, break in the middle of a two hour work, not break, but uh, brain 
mix up in the middle of a two hour workshop. Or if you want it to be more thoughtful and drawn out, uh, really invite people to all reach consensus on everything in the calendar. Okay, that's Life Life's calendar. Task toss, um, the idea that whenever you're in a learning context, some sort of professional development, people have a bunch of things that are higher priority than what you're doing with them right now. And we call them, we might call them, oh, you got fires to put out. Um, and so people are sneaking out on breaks and they're catching up on emails and making a quick call, especially uh, the higher up you go with a group and the more senior a group is, the more pressure and busy and uh, um, not present they might be. Perhaps that's an over overgeneralization. And so, uh, you know, I had a mentor, Eric Tyler, who said half the power leaves something when you just speak it or say it, right? It's the idea of pointing out the elephant in the room to some degree. And so task toss, you got 10 bean bags, steal your kids' stuffed animals for the day and uh, uh, simply get the group up and just say, hey, I know you got a ton of stuff going on outside this room. Just as a way of getting present, speaking that and kind of speaking that stress in a playful way. I'm going to hand five of these stuffed animals out, five of these bean bags out. And your goal is to toss the bean bags as quickly as possible. If you are thrown a bean bag, you should catch it and then toss the bean bag as quickly as possible. This is going to go on for three to four minutes. The only rule though is you cannot throw a bean bag unless you speak out some task that you need to get done this week or something that is taking up your brain space that you know you need to get done. Right? So you have people shouting out a bunch of tasks they have to do while they're also laughing, getting hit in the head with a bean bag, um, et cetera. Just something fun, simple, playful, but also purposeful and related to time management. Those are your three activities. Now, if you want to get uh, super smart and figure out how to uh, discover those yourselves, I am going to share how I came up with them. Um, now, I could have said, I've got a you know, library of several hundred different experiential group exercises because I think we learn best, the brain learns best when we do rather than just learn. And so especially if I'm gonna teach a concept like time management, I don't want to um, just put up 45 PowerPoint slides about time management. I want people to actually manage their time in live in that uh, session. So um, it was, it still is 9.30 a.m. on Monday morning, an hour and a half after I got this email. And uh, so I just, I needed like some initial uh, thoughts to get my brain queued up. And so I just said, respond to this email that I got with a bolded list of awesome and specific suggestions. Pasted the email from Natalie. And what it came back with, some of it was like time management bingo. Possibly a little cringy and cheesy, meh, meh, meh. It came back with like okay things. But what they did is spark a bunch of really good ideas for me. The Pomodoro technique simulation, um, the, I, they gave the Pomodoro technique, which just basically brought that idea into my brain. And then I said, wait a second, what if we turn the five minutes into a movement related uh, break and 25 minutes of actual uh, exercise? So just a little tweak. And so all of this to say, ChatGPT is a beautiful way to get started on creating really phenomenal um, ideas. Um, I responded then and said, you know, some of these are good, minus bingo, but most do don't involve movement. Have them involve more movement. And to be honest, this uh, thing came up with were like, nah, we're not going to do musical chairs with a group of senior executives. However. Um, this one sparked for me, juggling priorities. There's an exercise called group juggle that could be really well for this that I'm not going to describe in this exercise, which I think I probably have another video about it. So subscribe. There you go. Um, and then uh, when I had this life-size uh, calendar appointment idea, I then went and said, ooh, can you create the directions for this? And then can you go ahead and create the sample appointments that I can print out? Morning workout, networking event, yoga class. There you go. You could tweak these to fit your group art class. Wow. I have to tell you, I have two young children. I have not been going to art classes for two hours lately. Hope this video was super useful. Uh, this was a one take recorded video with no edits. Most of the videos on my channel are cut to be um, as concise as possible. Hopefully this was still fairly concise. Uh, Natalie, I hope your session goes super well. Have an awesome day.